Yeah, this is communication. No, no, no. There are two things. One is mode of communication. The other is content. So, mode of communication is ob obviously unique. Okay. So, true. That has been done in local languages also. That is what other thing is. So, the poetry giving rise to mathematics is something which is unique to this tradition. First of all, the kind of uh, meters that we find in this tradition is something which is not comparable in others. Okay, definitely, certainly not in English. We have just uh, ayam, trochi, and a few things. So the richness that you have here has given rise to certain interesting mathematical problems and solutions and recursive relations. So that is something which is a different thing. So content-wise, <laughs> and even technically, that's what I was trying to say. So a method which is unparalleled, which is most efficient, we will be able to find. That is what is called Chakravala. Yeah. Which has bit even Ireland and Ragrange. They came up with some solution, but that is not something which is as efficient as this, if you want to solve that problem. Why do you want to solve that problem? I mean, we can ask the question <laughs> to mathematicians. <laughs> why, why do they attempt? I mean, they just keep uh, moving in their own spaces. Yeah. Huh. Oh, not much to my knowledge. Yeah, as a statistics, as a science, I don't uh, see. <laughs> if at all, one has to say it has to be something which uh, has to do with astrology, the other person. That's what? No, no, no. The thing is, this uh, notion of probability, I have not come across in these standard texts, okay? So, which forms the fundamental uh, thing for uh, developing statistics. So, we don't find as such. To my knowledge, I don't know. These uh, standard texts on mathematics, they don't deal. But uh, maybe there are instances in other uh, contexts which may have this. I have known this. Ah, complex. <laughs> Even the whole number was not acceptable to the world. Only natural numbers was accepted. So at different stages, different things evolve. We need to understand. So people were only dealing with whole numbers. The notion of void and infinite was really something which societies avoided, civilizations avoided. Whereas, to include zero as a number, that was a giant leap. And prescribe operations with zero was a giant leap, if you look at the history of mathematics as it evolved. Because, I mean, it is zero is a bizarre number, all said and done. I mean, it will just throw out or collapse things and so on and so forth. So, to include that itself was a giant leap. So, they did that. And uh, after that, I mean, came real numbers and various other numbers. And uh, like zero was integrated at some stage, this complex numbers was integrated at a different stage of evolution of mathematics. So there is no question of having complex numbers in Indian mathematics. Even fractions were not allowed at some point by the Greeks. Yeah, at some stage, yes. But uh, in Indian texts, I must tell you that there will be a chapter called Parikarmashtakam. This Parikarma Ashtakam, the very name, I mean the names are also uh, coined in a very intuitive way that will convey what is being done there. I mean that is how the names, even Jya for instance, that is a god. So all the names that you find here will be something which you can easily relate. That is how things have been coined. So Parikarma means something which is Paritaha Kriyamanam Karma a mathematical operation which is done everywhere. So, which means the basic fundamental operation, some uh, plus, minus, uh, multiplication, division, and square, square root, cube, cube root. So, these are called parikarma. So, parikarma with whole numbers will be first discussed. 
then parikarma with fractions will be discussed later then parikarma with thirds will be discussed <laughs> okay so this is how these texts are developed